Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the Slovakian Math Olympiad. So this is from the 2015 and 16 edition. So our goal is to look for all A, B, and C, which are positive real numbers, satisfying the following equation, A plus C times B squared plus AC equals 4A, and then find the maximum value of B plus C. And then after we found that maximum possible value for the quantity B plus C, we want to find all triples A, B, C that achieve this maximum. So usually I give some hints before launching into the solution, but in this case, I think any hint that I would give would give this problem away. So I'm not gonna give any hints. So pause the video and try this if you want to. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a solution. And we're gonna start with the following observation. So if x and y are positive real numbers, so I'll write that just as I did over there as being on the interval zero to infinity, um, we have the following inequality. So we have x minus y quantity squared is bigger than or equal to zero. So that's pretty obvious. If you take any real number and you square it, well, that's gonna be bigger than or equal to zero. But now if we multiply this out, that gives us x squared minus 2xy plus y squared is bigger than or equal to zero. But then maybe moving that around a little bit, that gives us the inequality x squared plus y squared is bigger than or equal to 2xy. And that is indeed the inequality which is gonna be extremely helpful for this problem. Let's maybe see how we could arrive at the need for that inequality. Well, let's look at the left-hand side here. And notice if we multiply the left-hand side out, which we're about to do, we'll have two objects that look like x squared plus y squared for different values of x and y that are in terms of a, b, and c. And so one way of finding a maximum is to build some sort of inequality involving these values. So that gives us a hint that something like this would be helpful. So now let's dive into the problem. So we'll start with the right-hand side here. So we have 4a equals, so I'll just write this out again, a plus c times b squared plus ac. Now we wanna multiply out this right-hand side. So let's see, we'll get a, b squared plus a squared c plus b squared c, and then finally plus a c squared. Now what I wanna do is group these terms so that I can use this inequality. So let's maybe see how we could do that. Well, notice that we could group this one with this one and take a c out and we have a squared plus b squared. So let's maybe do that. So we have a squared plus b squared times c. So I'll underline this in blue so we see where that comes from. And then all of the stuff left over, we could factor an a out and we have b squared plus c squared. So let's do that. So we have a times the quantity b squared plus c squared. Okay, so I'll underline that in purple. Now, since we've had this inequality, we'd like to use it, but the question is, do we use it on this first term, the second term, or both terms? So let's try replacing both of these terms with this inequality. So that'll give us the following inequality. We have this is bigger than or equal to 2abc plus 2abc, where we replace that b squared plus c squared with 2bc and that a squared plus b squared with 2ab. But now notice that that adds up to 4abc. Then next, we can cancel a 4a from both sides, and that's because we know that a is not equal to zero, and we know that it's positive, so the inequality won't switch or anything, and we'll get that one is bigger than or equal to bc. That might seem like it's helpful, but we've actually found a maximum value for b times c instead of b plus c. So this isn't helpful. So we need to go back to the drawing board and maybe instead of replacing each of these using this inequality, we'll only replace one. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so we just saw that replacing each of those underlying things with this inequality is not super helpful. So we're gonna only replace one. And which one do you replace? Well, you can look at it and see that perhaps it's gonna be best to replace this second one. 
but you can always try replacing the first one and see that you don't get something that's that helpful and then replace the second one. So let's see what we get with that. We'll have this is bigger than or equal to um, a times b squared plus c squared um, plus 2abc. Great. Now I can factor an a out of this whole thing and I'll be left with b squared plus 2bc plus c squared. But look, we can factor that as a binomial. So that's gonna give us a times b plus c quantity squared. So we're left with the following inequality. We have b plus c quantity squared is less than or equal to four. And we get that because we can cancel the a from both sides of this. Again, because a is a positive real number. But what that tells us is that b plus c is less than or equal to two. So we found a maximum possible value for b plus c, which was the first goal of this problem, and that is two. Okay, so I'll get rid of this and we'll find the triples that achieve this maximum. So far we've determined that b plus c is less than or equal to two. Now we want to figure out which triples a, b, and c satisfy the top end of this inequality. In other words, when is b plus c equal to two, given that a, b, and c have to satisfy this starting equation? Well, let's first notice that probably we're gonna have some sort of free variable here. So we can maybe set C equal to a free variable, and then that will tell us that um, B has to be equal to two minus C. But then, given the fact that B is a positive real number, then that means that C is not quite a free variable, but it is on the open interval zero to two. So in other words, it's bigger than zero, but it is less than two. Okay, so here's what we have so far. We have C is on the open interval zero to two, and then we have B is equal to two minus C. Now we're gonna plug this data into our given equation and see if we can figure out some restriction on A. Now, a priori, we do not know that C is going to stay you know, with this little restriction to it, but we'll see that, yeah, C can really be any real number between zero and two, but we don't really know that yet. Okay, so let's plug this data into this equation. That's gonna give us A plus C times two minus c quantity squared plus a c equals four a. Good. So next what I wanna do is maybe multiply out this two minus c quantity squared. So that's gonna give us a plus c times, this is c squared minus four c plus four plus a c, that's gonna be equal to four a. Now we can maybe distribute this a plus c onto this term right here. There's gonna be a lot of terms, but if we're just careful with the bookkeeping, it'll be okay. So we've got a c squared minus four a c plus four a plus a squared c. So that's from multiplying the a through. Let's see what we get from multiplying the c through. We'll have c cubed. So that's good, minus four c squared and then plus 4c plus ac squared, and then we still have this equals 4a over on the right-hand side of the equation. Now I wanna notice I have a 4a on the left and the right-hand side of the equation, so I can cancel those, and now I have a zero on the right-hand side of the equation. Next, I wanna notice that I have a common factor of c among all of these terms, so I can factor a C out of this left-hand side. So let's do that. I'll factor a C out of this left-hand side. And then I'll maybe combine what I can combine and also rewrite this a little bit at a time as we move to the next part. So notice that we've got an AC squared here and we have an AC squared here. So we can cancel this one if we put a coefficient of two. And then next, I wanna notice that everything left over is quadratic in A, where we're thinking about A as our variable. So notice that this is like my A squared term. Well, I factored a C out of it, so now the coefficient is one, so I just have A squared. And then what terms are linear in A? Well, that's gonna be this term and this term. So I factored a C out of those. 
So that's actually gonna be able to be simplified quite a bit. So that's gonna give us the following, two C minus two times A. So I factored a C out already, that's right there. And then I can factor a two out of each of those and that leaves me with this thing right here. So just to reiterate, these two purple things netted us this linear term in A. And now notice that my constant terms are given by this. There are no A's here. But I factored a C out, so I in fact have C squared minus 4C plus 4. But we can factor that as C minus 2 quantity squared. And then I have 0 on the right hand side. So let's just reiterate how that happened. We factored a C out of this. That C landed here, and then we factored that as a binomial squared. Okay, but if you look at this carefully, you can see that this is in fact a binomial squared. So this whole left-hand side factors like A plus C minus two, the whole thing squared. So notice a times a is a squared, then we've got a times c minus 2, but we'll get two of those from like foiling it out, and then we'll have c minus 2 quantity squared, that gives us that. And then we have this is equal to 0 on the right hand side. So what that tells us is that a is equal to negative c minus 2, in other words it's equal to 2 minus c. And that gives us all possible triples. So notice all possible triples are of the form 2 minus c, that's what we got for our a, and then 2 minus c, that's what we had for our b from way before, and then c, where c is free up to a point. In fact, the only restriction on c is that it's between uh, 0 and 2. In other words, it's on the open interval 0 to 2. And that's a good place to stop.